The global economy is looking rather gloomy if you look at recent manufacturing data. In June 2019, global production continued to weaken and is reaching seven-year lows. Global PMIs, that is Purchasing Managers Indexes, are a fairly reliable way of measuring economic health. The multinational investment bank, JP Morgan, collate this data and have recently released a press release titled Global Manufacturing PMI at Lowest Level Since October 2012. In June, the global manufacturing PMI fell to 49.4, its lowest level for over six and a half years, and posted back-to-back -back readings below 50 for the first time since the second half of 2012, 50 being the level at which the economy is considered to be expanding. The majority of nations surveyed indicated a contraction including China, Japan, Germany, the UK, Taiwan, South Korea, Italy and Russia. Subsector data indicated that operating conditions weakened again in the investment goods and intermediate goods industries. In comparison, consumer goods fared better, despite being at a three-year low. This table tells it all. Global PMI is falling, output is falling, new orders are falling, new exports are falling, employment is falling, input prices are rising but at a slower rate, output prices are rising but also at a slower rate. The only positive news is the Future Output Index, which although positive, is positive to a lesser extent. We also have to remember that future output is a prediction, and predictions can change. JP Morgan's Olya Borishevska commented on the survey. She said, The global manufacturing sector downshifted again at the end of the second quarter. The PMI surveys signalled that output stopped growing, as inflows of new business shrank at the fastest pace since September 2012. This impacted hiring and business optimism, with the latter at a series record low. Conditions will need to stage a marked recovery if manufacturing is to revive later in the year. This global slowdown has been driving recent rate cuts. Overall demand is sluggish, confidence is sliding, and business investment is likely to stay weak well into the foreseeable future. Markets are pricing that around 17 central banks will cut rates this quarter, including the Fed in the US later this month and the European Central Bank in September. It's also quite possible that the Reserve Bank of Australia will cut rates again soon. On Thursday, the boss of the New York Fed, John Williams, commented about the need to vaccinate the economy. He said, It's better to take preventative measures than to wait for disaster to unfold. Don't keep your powder dry. Taking a look at the CME FedWatch tool, there's a high likelihood that the Fed will cut interest rates at the July 31st meeting. The only question is by how much. Will it be a small 0.25% rate cut or a large 0.5% one? US President Donald Trump is a fierce advocate of cutting interest rates and driving the US dollar down. He tweeted, I like New York Fed President John Williams' first statement much better than his second. His first statement is 100% correct in that the Fed raised far too fast and too early. Also must stop with the crazy quantitative tightening. We are in a world competition and winning big, but it is no thanks to the Federal Reserve. Had they not acted so fast and so much, we would be doing even better better than we are doing right now. This is our chance to build unparalleled wealth and success for the US. Growth, which would greatly reduce percentage debt. Don't blow it. Anyway, that's it for me. Manufacturing down, rates are being cut around the world, the global economy is just not looking very good.